Welcome to the Mischief, I'm Valen, and this is Feed the Beast Stoneblock 3. Today I'm planning on fighting at least one boss, if not two, and we'll also be exploring on methods to get to the end rings. But before all that, I need to prep, and that means that if I'm going to fight the Gaia Guardian 2, I need to be a little bit, well, just better equipped for it. And I figure if I can practice a little bit on some uh, prep methods for fighting it, then maybe I can do a little bit better when we fight maybe that mother silverfish. I have no idea how dangerous that is. So I've got my usual techniques for fighting the Guardian of Gaia, Gaia 2. Uh, we're going to be using some incense. We're going to be using some flowers. Uh, we're going to be using some mana. Also, I need a Charm of the Diva. We're going to start with that because this tends to turn mobs uh, that hit you to start attacking other mobs instead of continuing to attack you. And I think this is going to be pretty important. Uh, it goes in the charm slot, so I don't think I have anything in that spot right now. But it does require a rune of pride, which then also is made of like a rune of summer and stuff. Uh, if you look here, it's fire and summer. And this time I'm going to go over to the runic altar, which only has one Gaia mana spreader aimed at it at this point. But I'm going to throw all these things on here in hopes everything should work out okay. Helps, of course, if I have all the ingredients for it to actually continue with that. We get one of these, move this off there, and grab my wand. And then it should be, yeah, it's already done. So let's just toss that on there, click it, and I've got my Rune of Summer. We're going to toss one of these on here, click, and I get it. And I think it instantly went right back <laughs> onto the thing. Oh, there we go, got it. And I'm just missing a couple Gaia spirits, which I did kill the Gaia Guardian at least once or twice more since the time that I've shown you in the past. There we go. Charm of the Diva. Should be nice. When I've got an empty charm slot down here, there we go. I now am a little bit better equipped to take on some large groups of mobs. Now previously I did mention incense. This stuff here is just like potion effects, uh, but it lasts for a lot longer. And I figure we can make a few of these ones, uh, but first we need to make incense plates, which looks like uh, any of the living wood logs plus some living wood slabs. Take the logs and the slabs, and I can make myself a bunch of these. Two, three, three of them should be enough. I don't think I'll need more than three uh, incense plates for now. So we need to make some incense sticks. Uh, at the very least, we're going to need to make three of those. Let me get this open so that we can actually make it proper. Uh, I already have living wood twigs. Let's just get three for the moment, and we can go from there. In fact, why not? I'll make a few more than that. We can make three more for the future, uh, so the future me will be a little bit happier about this. Then we can put this in here and craft up a bunch of those. There we go. We've got six of those now. So maybe I do skip the speed 2 effect, because I, I already do move pretty darn fast with my current sash that I've got. And I can go with strength, uh, fortitude, and cross souls, because I currently have an amulet that gives me regen 2, so I'm not as bothered with that. Plus it's the lowest uh, time one of all of these. The rest of them are all uh, 90 minutes, <laughs> which is quite a, quite a lot, actually. So in order to do this, I'm going to need to take the incense stick, put it on the botanical brewer, and then toss in the appropriate ingredients to get that. So I'm going to need some wort, some powder, and some dust. Now I just need to stand on the botanical brewer, toss down an incense stick, and then the different ingredients, and it should instantly, if not very quickly, make these things. Realize that this uses up a lot more mana than it would if you're making a vial of these things, but it's still going to be really good nonetheless. And that Crossed Souls one's one took quite a bit. I think what I'm going to do is store these not infused ones in there. I do have some resistance potions and some strength potions of my own, as well as those other uh, necklaces for future me. But uh, I think these three plus this will be good. You'll also need a flint and steel to light them. They do affect a 30 block radius. So you just need to put them just outside of your uh, fighting area so that they don't count as something against you. Uh, but I do need a few more things. I need three flowers, and I want to put them down in uh, a as like a simple placeable item. I don't want to have to dig a piece of dirt and then place it. So we're first going to be making a Julia, and this will create more or less a force field to keep all the mobs that spawn towards the end of the Gaia battle uh, off of you. They, they won't be able to reach you, and they'll just kind of bounce off. 
There we go, and as per usual, we just toss in the different ingredients, followed up with some seeds, and we've got a Julia. Next, we're going to want a bell thorn. Uh, actually, I'm going to want two of these. This is going to help deal with all the mobs in, that get spawned in. It's going to constantly doing a, uh, be doing a lot of damage to them, or at least a little bit. And this is why I want to have a couple, if not several, actually. I, I might make a few. The bell thorns are thankfully a little bit easier to make. Uh, I just need to do one, two of those, one, two, three of those, one of those, and a seed. Then, of course, I just need to right click, toss in a seed each time to reproduce more. And there we have it. I now have six bell thorns, which is probably a bit of overkill, but hey, uh, this way I can just be sure. But these are currently requiring, both of these flowers are currently requiring to be planted on some kind of like dirt or grass or something like that. I, I don't want that. I want it to be on a little floating thing so that I can just do it myself. Now in order to do so, we're going to need to make a, uh, a, a floating flower. And for that we need any flower plus pasture seeds and dirt in order to make that work. So to make the pasture seeds, you just take some, some grass clippings and just make it from that. So to start with, I'm going to do just regular black flowers, a bit of dirt, and pasture seeds. And then that should make it, at least I thought it would. Oh, here's the problem, glimmering black flowers, which means I need to take two glowstone and attach that to those flowers as well. There we go, just taking a bunch of glowstone and just slapping it on there. Then when I do it, there we go, that works. So if I just craft all of them, then I think I just take these seven flowers and combine them with something like the bell thorns, and I can get all those ones. And then to get the Julia, I just replace that, craft it, and I now have these floating ones that I can place down. I'm going to take my Charm of the Diva off momentarily just so I can see the area that these are going to affect. So we're going to want floating Julia here first. And that should be good. That this, when I look at it, gives me like this big protective area. Actually, that that might be a bit too close. Let's move it back a bit so that when I look at this, yeah, that's nice. It gives me like this dome effect. It might still be a little bit too close. Let's move it back here. That's better. That's better. Uh, I don't want it to be quite so close to this that it pushes everything out of the area uh, because I plan on just kind of standing here and attacking things from range. And I should be able to put these down and see the area that they affect, which is great. This is good, this is good. So I put three over in e each of these corners here, and it should ensure that we've got a decent amount of coverage for fighting these mobs. Actually, I don't want it there. I want it, I want it on top. There we go. Because I didn't exactly put them in the, right, the same spots, so so, <laughs> but regardless, these cover a really good distance, and any mobs that get pushed away should get pushed out in that area or in that area, maybe even back here, but then that means I can shoot them if I need to, um, and that'll keep me rather well protected here, minus any kind of like pink fairy uh, damaging fields that are on the ground. But I do have a regen effect, I can eat food, and of course uh, I have spells. Speaking of... Now it's time to buff myself a bit further, and that's mainly with my mage's spellbook. I'm currently just doing a regular magic missile that doesn't do much damage at all. I mean, I'll be lucky if I can kill uh, some of these ones here that only have like a half heart left, <laughs> because this thing doesn't do much damage. But I was thinking I could probably upgrade this a little bit, and I think that I can do that with a glyph of amplify, I think. But in order to make one of those things, it says here I need a scribe's table. Now, uh, again, I'm not that familiar with Ars Nouveau, but I figure it's something that I should probably take a look into at the very least to get some of this stuff made. Oh, I need some, some slabs here. We'll make one set of that. And then I should be able to make this scribe's table. There we go. All right. It looks really cool. I got to say, um, maybe I set it here. Oh, okay. All right. That works. It's not connect. It is connected. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna need to fix that. If I recall properly, this said that I would need that. And if I click on this, oh hey, here we go. 
Now I already have harm. I'm looking for amplify. Hold shift for more info. Levels required three. That's not a problem. Okay. Select. Toss items as they appear above to complete crafting. Okay, or I just I just get it. I now have a glyph of amplify. I have now unlocked this glyph. So I don't have it on there. Oh, I needed to right click it. Okay. All right. So let's open it up. Hey, there we go. So this projectile, do I need to do? Oh, okay. Harm, amplify, amplify, hold shift. Addi additively increases the power of most spell effects, can increase the harvest level of break, and increases the damage of spells. So if I do this, click create. I have no idea if that's actually going to be a thing. Oh, that, that uses a lot of mana. <laughs> I mean, it comes back really quick, but that uses a lot of mana. Let's teleport down here to the nether area. There it is, nether rooms, up here. And we've got piglins and stuff. Okay, so he just insta-died. This is good so far. I mean, things just straight up die, but... Uh, oh, here we go, hoglins. Oh, it's taking four hits to kill them? Oh, that guy was a skilled one, though. And my man is not coming back fast enough. Oh! <laughs> so this is actually a really good test here. I mean, I have no idea how many hit points these guys have. Uh, but you can see... Am I actually doing damage to this one? I guess I am on occasion. It depends if I hit. And I don't know if I have, like, too many can cast tier 2 glyphs or lower. Oh, that's right! I didn't upgrade my spell book! I need to do that. Oh, but for that I need a Wilden Tribute? Okay. Obtained by defeating the Wilden Chimera. See Ritual of Summon Wilden Ars Nouveau. Oh, okay. Maybe I do change this up a little bit, because at the moment I think it's a little too expensive because I can't shoot it fast enough that I, as fast as I would like. So let's take off some of these Amplifies and then try it again. Oh, it's, it's still too much. All right. Oh, I didn't and save it. Create. There we go. Yeah, my, my mana can just drop really fast from shooting this still. So let's just try three and see how that goes. I'm going to wait for my mana to recharge. That's better. I, I like that. I mean, whatever this guy has that's keeping him alive right now is really annoying. But at least it gives me an idea of something I can work with, uh, since I had a target that just was holding still the entire time. All right, back over here. We need a Wilden Tribute. Without augments, this ritual will summon a random variety of Wilden monsters for a short duration. When augmented with a Wilden Spike, Wilden Horn, and a Wilden Wing, this ritual will summon the Wilden Chimera, a challenging and destructive monster. Note, if summoning the Chimera, this ritual will destroy blocks around the brazier. Oh. Kidoki. So ultimately I need the Wilden Tribute, but to do so I need a Tablet of Summon Wilden. I mean, that's not too bad to craft. Um, I am concerned that this is going to be a boss fight that I, I don't know if I'm prepared for. Um, hopefully I will be. I mean, I've got other weapons and stuff too. I was planning on using my Mage Spellbook. I don't have any AoE stuff, but I'm hoping that my Batania stuff will actually help protect me. Um, I guess we'll see. And just to ensure that these things are currently using the mana pools and the mana that are that's nearby, you can look at the flowers while holding your staff just to ensure that they're not too far away from their uh, power sources. Okay, so how do I use this thing? All right, it said brazier, so I believe I probably need one of these, a ritual brazier, which requires an arcane pedestal and source gem blocks. Let, let's try putting this here. And see what happens. Um, I mean, I have no idea. <laughs> Set it there. And I think, do I just put this on here? Oh gosh, am I ready for this? I don't know that I am. Um, I can grab these and get the incense sticks down as well. That might be a good idea. So I'm going to put this here. One of those, one of those, and one of those. And then I just need to light them. And each of these should last... 90 minutes. Cool. Everything else is good. All right, let's try putting this on here and see what happens. 
Okay. It did say that there was more to it than that. Is this going to keep burning? When augmented with a spike, horn, and wing, this ritual will summon the wild and chimera. Oh, um, I, I haven't been getting any spikes, so now I'm a bit concerned that I don't have the necessary materials for this. You know what? While I wait for the whole thing, I may end up just destroying it and re or picking it up and redoing it once I've got a spike, because I don't have that yet. But I do have some other things here. And that is this, something I can still work with because I've already lit those incense items. And I just need to move this out of the way, uh, which I don't think that that's really going to be a big waste at all. And I can put this into this beacon. Let's just overeat a bunch and then I'll be set to go. Uh, I don't think I have anything else that I want right now. So let's give it a try. Gaia Guardian number two. And I'm going to stay back here in my safety zone and just shoot at him. And apparently Gaia Guardian 2 now ends up like shooting. <laughs> I don't remember them shooting before. <laughs> I'm doing a little bit of damage here and there, but not much. But I anticipate that that's also a thing with the Gaia Guardian. You never really can do much for damage on them and I'm almost dead oh gosh and that was embarrassing but for some reason the battle is still here and they're just kind of waiting for me so I'm just gonna put all my stuff back on how nice of them to just kind of sit there and wait. I mean, my regen effect is nice. I don't have a Fallen Canade going, but oh my gosh. I was expecting better results from this, honestly. Oh. Never mind. This is interesting. It appears that, uh, yeah, there's just actually nothing going on now. So let me just break this. Nope. It's a permanent feature. I get rock music playing in the basement now forever. All right, well, let's see what happens if I try it a second time. <laughs> I'm a glutton for punishment. All right, the, the music is just doubling, so I need to turn off the jukebox. There we go. Are there two of them now, or is there just the one? Just the one. Okay, well, that's fine. That's one thing. Oh gosh, I'm going to have to have this other guy in place as well. That's going to throw me off, especially if they go to that one spot. And I realize that I made myself a protective area, but these purple areas still will spawn everywhere. Oh my gosh. Maybe I'll just shoot him. Because <laughs> the mage bolt, bolt doesn't seem to go as fast as I wanted. I probably could have increased that the speed on that. I'll just kill them, shoot through all of them. Actually, the crossbow's not not too bad. I mean, it goes fast enough, and I can shoot through mobs, which I couldn't with the magic. When he starts throwing mobs around, I can then instead start hiding in my normal hidey spot. Because it appears that even the fairies aren't taking damage from the... Uh, the bell thorns at this point which would be nice but I think they only have like one health or something okay here we go so now this is where they start doing the mob spawn air area and I should be able to just shoot through them as I need to actually I'm not being I'm not being protected at all okay it would seem my old methods of using the uh, Giulia to give me a force field is not actually affecting anything here. This is really sad. <laughs> okay, well, they're dead. I'm not. Apparently moving around is something that I have to do. I don't know what the deal is with, with this and you. I'm done with you. There we go, Dice of Fate. 
Okay, let's get rid of some of this junk. And that, I think, completes an achievement for Batania. Oh, look at that. Eye of the Flugel, which I think gives you teleport options. Soulbound to me. Okay. Nice. Okay, so the uh, Eye of the Flugel is a teleporter. I just sneak right click on a spot, and then I can teleport back to that spot. I, I don't know if I can have multiples. No, nope. looks like it's just one, which is fine with me. I'll just put it right there. And then if I want to, I can teleport all the way from back here in the future. So as it turns out, Charm of the Diva was healing the mobs that I was attacking. So that's definitely something to be aware of. And I think that that also made my battle with the uh, Gaia Guardian that much more challenging. But I think I'm going to press on and try and work my way towards the end layer, which is going to take me a bit because I'm going to have to dig through this area here in the nether. And you can see, yeah, we're getting into an area that has a little bit uh, extra involved in it. Mm. And it looks like we're finally reaching the outer edges. Oh, and this, this digs very slowly in comparison to what I was doing before. <laughs> okay, but either way, I'm getting to the end stone area, which is quite nice. Because this is what I was looking to get to. And it looks like there is an area up ahead. So let's put a marker here. So mistakes were made. Apparently that leads all the way down to bedrock. I must not have placed my waypoint that good. Let's try here and see if that one's any better. Oh, that's above us. Oh, okay. Well, let's just dig a little bit to the side here and then work our way up. And there we go, we're finally in. Looks like there's going to be lots of trouble in here. Oh, that's a huge open area. Okay, well. Yeah, there are shulkers everywhere. This is going to be fun. <laughs> Good thing is I have my uh, <laughs> flugel tiara going so I can fly and off put the uh any of that stuff but let's go in here and see what we've got oh look at all the goodies let's just hope that i can kill these guys before my flugel tiara's uh, juice runs out interesting i'm getting ritual starters and dragon scales okay so it would seem that these catalysts, the ritual starter catalysts, um, are used for summoning the mother silverfish, which is something that we're going to need if we're going to continue on. Uh, and that requires a bunch of warm silverfish shards, cold ones, and eggs. Well, eggs is easy. I've been gathering some cold and warm from the different uh, biomes, but you can also mix and make them, but then that also requires a silverfish heart, which it outputs one as well, though. So that's interesting. So it, it, it doesn't actually get used up in the recipe, so it's reusable. I got a bunch of Dragon's Breath and some other things in here as well. Uh, ultimately, I just flew around, put a bunch of Magnum Torches, <laughs> or the, uh, the Mega Torches and uh, the, the Flare Lanterns around so I could see things a little bit easier. And it's kind of cool. I mean, I gotta, I gotta say, it's really nice. And uh, most of the loot was pretty much here on this ship i don't know that there's anything else uh, of note around here there's so many of these darn little jerks here that are just ready and willing to just make you float to the ceiling in many opportunities there we go oh so i'm, I'm glad that they're gone and done with <laughs> but other than that i didn't really get too much in here i mean i got some catalysts that i think i needed so i'm pretty sure that at this point i could just head on out of here and head back and to do that instead of using the warp thing i'm just gonna teleport with the eye of the flugel all the way back to base oh it's really good and i still have wild and horn horns but i don't have any spikes my mob farm has for some reason stopped working but then at the same time you know we, we also have our what seems to be a permanent resident in the basement as well so i'm guessing something might have happened there i, I might have to reload my world and maybe that'll fix things? I, I don't know. Either way, um, <laughs> I, I, I done broke Minecraft.
So if you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to see more like it, please do me a favor, click the like button, click subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to spread the mischief to others. If you want to check out more videos, we have them up on our Mischief of Mice 2 channel, which also is the uploads from our Twitch streams that we do regularly. Till next time, folks, I'll see ya.